the America's Cup. It is a race sailed across tides and generations. In the year 2003, the cup was won by a Swiss team called Alinghi, led by Ernesto Battarelli. This is the story of a challenge to reclaim the cup by a team brought together and united in that purpose by Larry Ellison. It was a quest that I started 10 years before. I thought about building the best possible team we could build, building the fastest possible boat we could build, and seeing if we could bring the America's Cup back to America. BMW Oracle's design, the most technologically advanced in sailing history. Powered by a hard wing sail, comprised of two pieces which shift and align according to signals from a computer, relaying wind speed and direction. It's the largest wing that's ever been built. It's larger than the wing span of a 747. The fastest sailboat ever made. USA 17 can reach speeds over 50 miles an hour and sail up to three times the speed of the wind. A boat designed to approach perfection and surpass the future. It's a stunning piece of engineering, and it's the limits of what's possible in sailing in the 21st century. And it's very exciting to be a part of it. For sure, the boats are going to be the stars of this cup. We'll probably never see something like this again. You know, not in, not in our lifetimes. Larry Ellison is a college dropout. Ernesto Battarelli, Harvard Business School. It's like a heavyweight championship fight where the fighters don't like each other very much. Larry Ellison said, the BMW Oracle sailing team is much better than yours. <laughs> it's, quite, uh, it's quite funny coming from Larry Ellison, who's uh, never made it to the final of the America's Cup. Ellison, self-made, Bertarelli, born into wealth. He inherited his money. I wasn't so lucky. <laughs> I wish I'd inherited a lot of money. I wish everyone inherits a lot of money. Yeah, look, why not? They both spent hundreds of millions of dollars to prepare for the race. Does he want to come and help his boat so we find out who's best? Bertarelli chose to drive his own boat, which he'd never before done in an America's Cup. While Larry Ellison put team first, swallowed his pride, and stepped aside for another helmsman. And checking! It was a selfless act, given Ellison's five world championships and a winning record in professional match racing. Likewise, for team leader Russell Coots, it was painful to give up the helm of USA 17 since he had skippered three winning America's Cup teams before. Larry and I both decided that um, uh, James Spittle, Jimmy, was the best one to drive the boat. Uh, obviously, you know, he'd done the most preparation, the most sailing, and he's, a, he's you know, I think he's the world's best helmsman right now. He's that good. Jimmy, at 30 years old, is in his fourth America's Cup. Uh, two years ago, I was racing in the professional match race circuit against Jimmy, and I had my best year ever as, as, as a pro. I came second in the professional match race circuit, way, way behind this young kid. He had not lost a race all year on the RC44 pro match race circuit until it's in Cagliari, Italy. I beat him, and it was one of the great days in my life. Russell Coots, New Zealand, after that. Three-time America's Cup winner, Russell Coots, was a primary source of tension between the two owners. If you want to win the America's Cup, I suggest you hire Russell Coots. His, his record's not too bad. He's been in three of them and won them all. 
Russell won a cup for Bertarelli's Swiss team Alinghi in 2003. However, he left to join the BMW Oracle team, led by Larry Ellison. There was a falling out between uh, you know, Ernesto and I. We had a, a difference of opinion on a range of issues. After Russell Coots won him the cup, Ernesto refused to pay him. Russell had to go to court in Switzerland to get paid. Did your friendship with Larry basically start to fall apart when he, when he hired Russell Coots? Possibly. You should ask him. You guys used to be pretty good friends, didn't you? Yeah, we got along very well. Mm -hmm. Do you know what happened or why? Yeah, when I hired, hired Russell Coots, he, he was afraid he was going to lose. In 2003, I was with Alinghi and sailing with Ernesto Bertarelli. I was the helmsman. When we won the America's Cup, Larry Allison actually came up and congratulated us. He was gracious. Ernesto actually said to him, hey, Larry, why don't we do a race in San Francisco? And, you know, why don't we drive? And I can remember thinking, I don't think this is a great idea, but anyway. <laughs> we brought um, Swiss 64, which was the boat that won the America's Cup, and uh, raced it against their boat. And um, Larry won. They had a second race in, in Newport, and the same thing happened. It was no surprise um, to any of us. What is he going to do if he loses? Is he going to continue to go to court? Ernesto Battarelli, as the defender of the cup, set the rules for this, the 33rd edition. At the end of the regatta here in Valencia that took place in 06, 07, Ernesto took the rules and just tore them up. Bertarelli set out to create a regatta for his America's Cup defense that only he could win. He picked an illegal venue. The umpires worked for him. And he reserved the right to change the rules whenever he saw fit. It was a sham. And most of the rest of the sailing world were pretty offended by this. And I talked to him on the phone and said, Ernesto, why are you doing this? And he said, Larry, wouldn't you do this if you'd won the cup? Wouldn't you like a set of rules like this? And your answer? My answer was, no, I, I really don't think I would feel good about winning if I couldn't lose. Once friends, after 15 court cases, 14 of which were won by Ellison and BMW Oracle, they became bitter do-or-die adversaries. It sort of seems like there's, you know, there's been this ongoing argument and dispute for two and a half years, but, you know, finally, it's a battle on the water. It's just between you and him. Yeah, and may the best team win. History on the Mediterranean today. Race one of America's Cup 33. And for the first time, multi-hulls contesting sailing's illustrious prize. We're on the countdown to the start of race one. At the start of a match race, the two boats jockey for position before crossing the starting line. The right of way belongs to the boat with the wind to its right. In this case, USA 17. Look at the power on that. Just before they cross the line, oh skipper Jimmy Spithill positioned USA 17. Ernesto had difficulty. Jimmy came in right on time, aimed right at him. So she had to change wow. course wow. First contact. to avoid a collision, so thus assuring a lingi was penalized. They were caught on their heels a bit. They weren't expecting it. The penalty against the Linky, can you believe it? That was aggression right from the start. Coming down to the final 20 seconds. 20. 20 seconds. BMW Oracle have made a mistake here. They're going oh, slow and backwards, PJ. BMW Oracle look to be stalled as we're coming down to the final 10 seconds. We broke one of our winches, and we ended up stuck and unable to sail the boat. In the meantime, they got back down, were able to cross the line and, and, and start on time. 
So we started the first race 660 meters behind them. Well, USA 17 is wound up. USA 17, 113 feet of carbon fiber, finally knifing through the waves. Its wing sail, 23 stories high, in hot pursuit. And Lingy still have a decent lead, but I think it's being chewed into here, PJ. At the, at the start, a Lingy led BMW Oracle when they recrossed the line by 660 meters. It is currently 435, coming down, 430. USA is continually going a little bit faster. Yet, with the deficit they started with, is a lot of racing to be done yet. And we have to remember, 20 miles upwind and 20 miles downwind. We're passing him now! Woo! Pass him now! Go USA! So that is the mark they're heading to, just down on the left. First building five. Here we come to the end of leg number one. And it's BMW Oracle leading a lingi as they're on the downhill slide. That's your average for the next minute. To the finish. 20 nautical miles away. America's Cup 33, defender a lingi. Skipper by Ernesto Bellarelli. Around the top mark. At 3 minutes 21 astern of BMW Oracle. Ernesto Bertarelli's bravado remained in full force. He still had not given up the wheel to a more experienced helmsman. Excess pride, perhaps. Was he chasing a better boat? Too soon to tell. So the question now is, can Alinghi get back into this first race? Right now, BMW Oracle is going 25 knots. Alinghi, 17 knots. That rubber band is just stretching out. Up on a 10-2. Still a little twisted here, Jimmy, and slightly under camping. I'm happy with that. Right now, we're lower track by about 5 degrees. BMW Oracle are flying both hulls, and I tell you, they'd fly all three if they could. That wing is a weapon. The America's Cup 33, race one, the finish. BMW Oracle beats Alinghi in the long-awaited, much-heralded clash of these multi-hull giants. And now the signal that BMW Oracle has beaten Alinghi by over 3,500 metres. We're fast today, and uh, uh, the wing seem, seems to be uh, quite a weapon. My question is for Brad. Uh, you have often stated that uh, the America's Cup is a design race. Do you think today that uh, Alinghi has failed in the design? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? What do you want me to say, mate? <laughs> they sailed from behind us, in front of us. <laughs> Did you see what happened? Oh, okay. Well, then you, you can work it out. The race was uh, fair, so whoever's going to win on the water, as far as we're concerned, is going to be the winner. We're focused on just one thing, and that's the, uh, the race on Sunday. I think in a long racetrack like this, it's, um, you know, it's never over till it's over. One more race, and a lingi have to fight with all they've got. Race two. A great deal hung in the balance on this February morning. Alinghi's prospects to host the cup again, the self-respect of their team, and the long-held bragging rights of the only European to ever win the cup. Also at stake, however, was the fulfillment of an American's 10-year pursuit, fueled by the memories of two failed attempts. Larry Ellison was not about to let up. I really hate losing. Ladies and gentlemen, the of USA. When we lost those two America's Cups, the clarity of the loss was, was very painful. That hurt. 
Alinghi attacking, but they're very, very slow indeed. BMW Oracle to the left, going round behind Alinghi. Coming down oh, to 15 oh. seconds. It's been a six hour wait, but race two, America's Cup 33 is on. Can Alinghi win and keep the regatta alive? Can BMW Oracle win the America's Three, Cup if they win two, this race? One, zero. Those and other questions soon to be answered, but BMW Oracle is off and racing incredibly. Alinghi have copped a penalty in the start sequence for the second successive race and look struggling to get underway. It is BMW Oracle with a super start out to the right. And now it is a lingi that is finally getting going. After a difficult start, first the penalty, and then they appeared to be a little stuck. Race two, America's Cup 33 underway. What a dramatic start. The second in a row. Alinghi have got a decent bit of breeze and actually to my eye Alinghi look like they're going not too badly at all here uh, BMW Oracle racing way out to the left side Well here Cameron it's a question of who's going to blink first they must be confident they can only one side favour That's Ernesto Bitterelli on the helm behind him Brad Butterworth I think when we all saw that Ernesto was driving Everyone thought that that was great, you know, on our team. We felt it, frankly, the difference in helming abilities really showed and it was obvious for the world to see. But still the advantage is with BMW Oracle. Ernesto didn't drive after about the first 15 minutes. Got a new helmsman, Louis Perron from France, has taken over the helm. Things had gone so badly in that first 15 minutes that I, I think he gave up. BMW Oracle have gone very soft indeed. Right at the start, we let Alinghi have the right-hand side of the race course. We separated more from them, I think, than we should have. We thought we had a much faster boat. In fact, we knew we had a much faster boat. We never should have let him get that separation. Here they come together. This is going to be the first cross. I think this is going to be real close. I, I think Alinghi may be ahead here. They had more wind. We have got a boat race on our hands here, folks. They picked up more than a kilometer. And the more wind you have, the faster you go. And Alinghi are right wound up into New Breeze. Uh, certainly Alinghi has found an extra couple of cylinders. They must have put some real power in the boat today. They're sailing beautifully. Alinghi, with her new helmsman, came from behind, overtook USA 17, and moved out to a 300-meter lead which eventually stretched to 600 meters. Big, big gains to Alinghi. Mateo, I'm bearing 205. BMW Oracle, are they are they attacking? It looks like they might. Uh, BMW Oracle attacking. Alinghi on starboard, BMW Oracle racing on port. They're coming together. Jimmy, just don't be slow in the slip. So take it if and now go slightly fast. JK and Mateo put us right where we wanted to be in the ley line from a long way out, you know, which is pretty difficult to do. Kick as you can, guys. Kick as you can. Got to go, OK? Go, 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 go. You know, it really put them in a tough spot. Remember, they're heading to the top mark. Oh, oh. Just 20 metre advantage to a lingi. This is incredible the pace these two boats are coming to add each other. Here comes the tank now from Alinghi 5. How long will it take before they fire up? Meanwhile... Painfully slow. Alinghi have let BMW Oracle get inside them at the windward mark. BMW Oracle look to be in front at the moment. BMW Oracle USA has regained the lead after leading early on in leg one and then Alinghi dominating for most of the first leg. Mark one, race two, America's Cup 33 out of Valencia, Spain. And USA skippered by Jimmy Spittle for BMW Oracle Racing is leading with two legs to go. 
Okay. We got the next pressure line coming in about 15 or less. But there's probably only five or ten bow lengths in it. That's your average pressure. It is very oh, close. One. one mistake on BMW Oracle, and they'll give a chance to Alinghi. Both boats were redlining the whole time. As BMW Oracle has hit 33 knots. The boats were so extreme. It was really all sort of knife edge that we were sailing. But look, when you get to the racing, that's that's usually what happens. USA for BMW Oracle, skipper by Jimmy Spittle, is now over 2,000 metres in front. We just got to think about the other... Uh, Closing down to the jibe mark. So that's the mark whistling by. Blink and you miss it. There we go. We're very away. Jimmy Spitchell's proud parents took in the action from a spectator boat. BMW Oracle are on the final hunt towards the finishing line. They're flying both hulls. Oh, oh, can you believe it? Alinghi are coming to the jive mark now, but BMW Oracle have shown their pace and power. Oracle have tanked. At one stage, BMW Oracle clocked at doing 33 knots. Still breeze is holding, and still BMW Oracle USA with a comfortable advantage. Little helm change on a lingy going on right there. Maybe Ernesto is taking back over from Lewick. Ernesto Bertarelli has had his hands firmly on the cup for the last two events, but it looks like his grip is slipping. Giving a little bit of twist, Jimmy. Yeah, a little puff coming. Oh. proud of this team, I'm so proud to be a part of this team, and I'm especially proud to bring the America's Cup, once again, after a long absence, back to the United States of America. Over the last uh, 10 years, anyone who has ever come close to the Alinghi team, understands what I feel now. Congratulations um, to the BMW Oracle team. Good victory, well done Larry, well done Russell. We exit, I believe, with uh, our head eye and uh, proud of uh, our achievement so far. I said congratulations. You won the America's Cup twice. You should be very proud. I've been in that situation. It's a bit of a shock. It's suddenly, it's over and you lost. Uh, it's, it, losing's brutal. Being a part of a team that doesn't give up and eventually prevails is one of the best feelings you can have in life. Both sailing crews partied all night and swapped stories. One sailor, Larry Ellison, was now the guardian of a 160-year-old tradition. He took a sip out of the cup and took stock of what it meant. <laughs> 